What's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be comparing the Wu device and the Surfer device. These are the top two height measurement tracking devices on the market right now. We went out for a session in Bloberg in about 35 knots with eight meter kite uh, jumping super high. And we measured both with four devices or more at the same time. So we will be reviewing these brands in four different areas. Session tracking features, app experience and usability, brand and company and the community behind it, and accuracy and consistency. These four categories will have winners in each category and by the end of the video, we'll have an overall winner. So before we can get started, uh, we think it's really cool that we can measure our jump height live at the water right now. Uh, Wu has been around for almost over 10 years now and Surfer has been around for three and a half years now. And both of the brands, they have a different approach on how to measure the jumps. And we're hearing a lot of debate about which of the devices works better. And today we're gonna put that debate to bed and find it out. So session features is everything that we can track while we're kite surfing. Some features that are important to us is live feedback on the water so we can see how we're doing. Ease of starting and stopping a session. Jump analysis so we can train and perform better next time and GPS tracking so we can see where we went and how far we kited. So this Wu you can buy for 280 euros. When you're using the Wu only, um, it's very easy to use. You just press the button, start recording, and after a session you press it again and it stops recording. You'd have no risk of losing anything like a valuable iPhone or Apple Watch. And it's super easy to find out about your session how high you jumped afterwards. That's also one of the downsides. You can only see how high you jumped after the session. You have no GPS data and of course you have to remind yourself that you have to charge it before you start kite surfing. When you add a watch to your session, you can connect it to the Wu and you can find out about your jumps live on the water. How far did you jump? How high did you jump? And also if the watch has GPS tracking, you can find out about your session afterwards, where you kited along the coast and share this with your friends. The only downside is that you have to buy an extra Apple Watch, which will start from 250 euros. Combined with the Wolf, 280 euros is quite a lot of money for one session. So with Surfer, there's three different methods of tracking your jumps. You can use only a watch. You can put a phone in your wetsuit in a waterproof pouch, or you can put the phone on your board and track your sessions that way. So to use Surfer on a watch, you need a watch. You can get an Apple Watch SE from 250 euros or more, and then you need a Surfer Pro subscription, which costs you five euros a month if you do monthly, or 375 a month if you book for a whole year. Then to start a session is super easy. You open the app, press start, it goes on water lock, and it shows you only the Surfer screen with your height, airtime, and distance. This will stay the whole session, so it's super easy. And if you buy a watch with digital SIM, you can share your session live with your friends while you're jumping so your friends can see on the beach how high you're actually jumping. With the watch you have GPS tracking, which is quite cool because if you do a downwinder, for example, you can see how far and where you went. You can upload this information to Strava as well, share it with your friends. And on the watch, there's a cool feature that you can communicate with your friends. Again, you would need digital SIM for this, but you can talk into the watch and say, hey, I lost my board, or hey, let's go five more minutes and then we grab a beer. So it's a super nice feature that you can communicate live with your friends. So to use Surfer in a board mount, you need to buy a board mount. Surfer sells them for 69 euros. You put your phone into the board mount, you close the water lock and you put it on your board. When you have the phone on your board, you do not only have live your jump height, same as the watch, but you can also get training or coaching on board. The phone will tell you if you're edging properly and if you're going into a kicker with enough speed. So that's really cool if you're trying to progress and try to jump higher every session, which I think all of us are. What's also very cool with the board mount is that you can use multiplayer mode. We've used this before. You make a little group of friends, you add them to the same game and you're jumping at the same time. And you can see if Stino does a jump, I will see how high he went and if he went higher than me. And we can have a little competition between us to see which one is going higher that session. So that's really cool. So the cheapest way to measure your jumps is just with your phone. You buy a pouch for 15 euros, you put your phone in the pouch and you can start measuring your jumps. This is what we use for our events, so everyone can join the competition. And if you put your phone volume up, you can actually hear the server phone saying to you how high you went. There's one downside, you put your expensive phone into a pouch and in case something happens to the pouch or it somehow gets out of your wetsuit, you might lose your phone. This hasn't happened to us or anyone in our events, but there's a risk to it, of course. So for session tracking features, our clear winner is Surfer. If you have or buy a watch, you don't even need a Woo because everything that the Woo can do, the Surfer can do as well. And with Surfer, there are even more features if you use the board mount or if you use the wetsuit mount. And even only with a watch, you already have more features than the Woo. Both of the brands have an app for on the phone and for on the watch. 
and we're going to talk about the differences and features of both. So comparing the watch interface, so the Surfer, once you start it, it's super easy. There's one big jump in the middle, that's your most recent jump. On the top right is your highest jump of that session, and it also shows at the bottom your distance and airtime of your most recent jump. It goes onto water lock, so you cannot touch it or move it unless you hold and press the digital crown. So it's easy and you won't accidentally change the interface of your watch. For Wu, there's a bit more information, so the numbers are a bit smaller. There's your speed, your height, your distance and your airtime as well. But you can also configure different screens to see what you want to see. If you only want to see your distance, for example, if you're doing a downwinder. But it gets also a bit more confusing and less easy to read. And also sometimes when you land, um, it takes some time before the wood to connect to your watch and show you the actual jump. So in my opinion, my preference goes out to the surfer in this one. Also, switching through screens can be a bit of a hassle during your session. So for me, it's just set it and forget it, and that works the best for me. When it comes to analyzing your session, both apps have a super easy overview of watching your session and analyzing your jumps. The Wu app looks a bit cleaner, but both look very similar. So sharing your session on both apps is possible and super easy. There's a share button on your session page. You can send the session to your friends, post it to Instagram, or just take a screenshot and post it online. So for both, super easy. Wu has a super nice feature where you can actually gamify and sort of challenge yourself within the app. It challenges you to jump higher and higher with giving you achievement and badges, which is quite cool. Surfer doesn't have that. If you pay for pro subscription, both apps you can delve into your personal insight to see how you're doing. If you're progressing throughout your sessions and jumping higher and higher every session. So that's cool and they both have that feature as well. What's pretty cool is that both apps have a spot map so you can discover and find new spots. On the server app you can see what people reviewed about the spot, what they think. So it's cool to find new spots if you're new in a country or new in a different spot where you never guided before. So when it comes to leaderboards, Wu is super nice because not only is it super easy to find in the app, but also you get an email if you're on the leaderboards for your spot, your country or worldwide. So that's pretty cool. So when comparing both apps, whether it's on the watch or the phone, we have a tie. We think on the watch it's nicer to use the surfer, but on the phone definitely it's nicer to use the Wu. Since I think most people are using the phone most of the time, we'll give this win to the Wu since it's a super nice app and it works great. So in this chapter, we're gonna to be comparing the community and the brand of both devices. The Wu has been around for 10 years. This is the Wu 4.0, their newest product. And Surfer has been around for three and a half years. So Surfer is definitely younger. But when we're looking at monthly users, Surfer is growing quite a lot. So we did some research into the leaderboards and tried to find out how many active users there are per day on average for the past two years. So in January 2022, Surfer had about 100 active users per day and Wu had about 600 active users. If we compare to this month, which is January 2024, Wu has about the same amount of users as Surfer. So we can see that Surfer has grown quite a lot in the past two years. Outside of the app, the community of Wu is engaging much more than the community of Surfer. Wu has more than three times as much followers than Surfer on Instagram. When you're jumping a new world record, everyone knows it. There's a lot of buzz around on social media. Wu has good marketing and that's mainly the big difference compared to Surfer. So when it comes to sponsorship, Wu is sponsoring some riders and they're pushing the riders to jump as high as they can, pushing the world record, which is quite cool. And they have a very cool annual competition called Wu Worlds, where the whole community can join together and compete against each other in one big event, which is quite cool. When it comes to professional events though, Surfer takes the edge because they can have live scoring. So the viewer can see how high every jump was and there's live feedback in the live stream, which is super cool. So to conclude this chapter, we're giving the win to Wu for now, since there's a lot of engagement around the community, but server is catching up quite quickly with almost as much monthly users as Wu. And there's a lot of new features coming to the server, which are quite cool. So now we come to our final and what we think is the most important chapter, which is accuracy and consistency. We did thorough testing in about 30 to 35 knots with all devices on. I had two watches on my left arm measuring with Surfer, Stino had two Woos on his board measuring with the Woo of course, and we also had a session measuring the Surfer and the Woo. This way we can compare the Surfer to the Surfer, the Surfer to the Woo, and the Woo to the Woo to see which one is more accurate and more consistent. So not only did we measure with all the devices at the same time, but we also set up a camera on the beach on a fixed and static point with a wide angle that we didn't change. This way we jumped at the same spot and we could measure the jumps on the camera. We try to analyze the footage where we have clips of our kite at 12 so we can have a rough estimation of what 22, 23 meters is like and then we drew a graph from there to estimate what the height is actually like. 
Then we compare that height to the height measured by both devices and the results are quite interesting. So for the visual test, we have six jumps in total, two server versus server, two server versus Wu, and two Wu versus Wu. Let's analyze them together. <laughs> measuring 70 jumps we can draw quite a firm conclusion about the consistency of using both devices. While using both wood devices on the same board there was a difference of up to two meters between those two devices. So if you're competing against your friends or you're training for yourself it's better to have actual data that is really reliable and consistent throughout every measurement. The wood device is not consistent in measuring which means you cannot compare yourself to your friends and you can also not compare yourself to your own sessions and see if you actually improved or the wood just measured that much higher by the algorithm or by the device itself. While using both the server devices though the biggest gap I had was 70 centimeters and that was when I was shaking my arm quite a lot so I'm still quite impressed that it did measure those jumps and overall I had a difference of about 10 centimeters on almost all of my jumps. That means if Stino is riding with a watch and I'm riding with a watch, we're both getting the same height measurement. That means that Surfer is way more consistent than Wu at this moment. If we're comparing the Wu to the Surfer, we also see that Wu measures higher overall. On all my jumps, Wu was measuring higher than the Surfer and the biggest outlier was 5.5 meters with a 25 to a 19 meter jump. So that's quite a big difference. Uh, also, when we're analyzing the footage, we think that Surfer is closer to the actual height than Wu, but you can be your own judge, look at the footage again and see what you think. And that's why we announced Surfer for a winner for this chapter. So, after these four chapters, we can come to a conclusion. The current standing is 2-2, two, two, two for Wu, two for Surfer. However, we find that consistency, accuracy and tracking session features are the most important things for a height measurement device. That's why we're gonna give the overall win to Surfer. Not only is it more reliable and consistent, but it's also cheaper and easier to use. However, your opinion might be different. For us, we think we put the debate to rest. And for the future, we're gonna be using Surfer since we can trust it more than Wu, but you can decide for yourself. There's a link below to our website where you can find a full extensive blog with all the data points as well, so you can see for yourself and draw your own conclusion. We hope you liked this video a lot. We have put a lot of effort into it. And now the only thing you have to do is like and subscribe.